The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. We'll be talking to the new receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou Marcoccia, and learning how he's using his experience as a successful businessman to improve government. Next on Cablevision's Meet the Leaders. Welcome to Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, a program designed to inform you and update you about your community and issues right here on Long Island. Today our guest is the receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou Marcoccia. Lou, it's good to have you here on Meet the Leaders for the first time. I know. Hi, Pat. It's really nice to be here. Now, you have been in office now, what, about a little, just a little bit less than a year? Correct. And, um, but before that, you were a very successful businessman in the technology field. Tell us about, a little bit about your background. Sure. I, I was in the corporate environment for about 20 years. Uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, I started my own computer consulting firm. Why? Uh, because I think I'm an entrepreneur. I wanted to do my own thing, uh, uh, and I think I had something uh, to offer. I was working on a certain methodology that took me years uh, uh, to work on, and I decided to, uh, to start my own consulting firm. So you got into the computer consulting business, and uh, you know there's an expression that's used in business calls, what is your value proposition? What is it that you bring to your customers to I, make it better? And, and what was it when you were in business? I think the key was cost and the quality of our product. And what I would do is actually, most of my clients were all outside of New York. Uh, we had about 80 clients throughout the United States, which, we, which included some of the largest organizations, International Paper, mm -hmm. state, of, uh, state of Georgia, federal government agencies. And what we did, we, we brought expertise and we were a niche player. And so we, we had value to what we were doing and it was at a very good uh, price. Now, back in the 80s and early 90s, um, believe it or not, the technology business was really in its infancy in a sense that it has, it has grown, it has evolved so much since then. Back then, everything was PC-oriented. That was the big thing. Now it's web-based. Um, as, you, as you worked with these large organizations, whether they be big corporations or government, what were some of the things that you learned in dealing with them to help them make the transition from the way they did things to the way that they wanted to do and, and, what, and what the efficiencies would be? Uh, what's really interesting, I first got involved with PCs. I actually taught one of the first night courses at the uh, University of at Farmingdale. Oh, is that right? Back in the early 80s when PCs first came out. And, 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 and you did see a, a transition uh, through technology. I think the biggest fear is people simply get satisfied in what they're doing. And sometimes you do need new blood, a different perspective, a change in management, or uh, you need introduction because people do get stale. And when people get comfortable in a business, you simply cannot do that. So, so change uh, and, and, and the pressure of um, the competition. Uh, you know, the bottom line of business is the bottom line. And if things are not going well, people will tend, certainly in those years, look at technology as an enabler really for co from uh, competition and survival. To, to, to reduce cost and, and improve their and services. And so services. It's, it's always about two things. But government is different than, than the uh, private sector. As you say, private sector's got a bottom line, and, and certainly in the 80s and 90s, and even now, it is very, very competitive out there, so you're always looking for that edge. How, in working with government as a, as a, as a businessman, how did, how did government embrace the kinds of changes and uh, improvements uh, that you were bringing to them? Well, there's two things that certainly I think is clear. Certainly there's not a profit motivation per se, but two, two, there's two realities. One is service, especially when you're talking about local government at the town level. It's about how can government provide services to his residents. The second issue is really about the budget. How can I do more with less? So those are, I believe, the two driving factors, because there's not a profit margin, right. but those are the two driving factors. You must do more with less, certainly given the economic times that we're in right now, which is really tough times, but we still have to provide those services. And the one aspect, the one avenue, 
to, to really do more with less is really technology, Pat. That's the enabler. That's the enabler. As a matter of fact, during good times, maybe management practices can be a little weak, but certainly during bad times, good management practices with enabling technology is really the key for, for providing more services, better services, certainly at, at, at a reduced cost. Now, you're a very successful businessman. You decided to get involved in, in government and politics. Uh, what made you decide to, to uh, say, you know what, I think I, 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 I want to pursue a career in public service as opposed to continuing with a very successful business? Uh, it, you know, I can't really tell you exactly what drives me. I can tell you a, a story. I remember being about 12 or 14 years old, and my uncle asked me, Lou, what do you want to be when you grow up? A baseball player, a police, uh, policeman, uh, what do you want to be? And, and I didn't say a baseball player, and I loved Mickey Mantle. What I said was, I want to be a congressman, because I simply wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I believe in serving. Uh, the reason I, I believe I started consulting uh, practice was the freedom, the personal freedom that I received. But I worked extremely hard. It's about servicing. And, and so I think the drive is, how can, what can I do for others? And I enjoy pleasing others. So I think that's probably the main driver, Pat. Well, let, let's get into the Office of uh, Receiver of Taxes. But before we do, I, 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 when you got into government and actually elected a year ago this coming November, um, as you, th as you thought about how you were going to apply your experience in the private sector and your experience working with government as a consultant, how did you describe that experience to the voters? I, I basically outlined, because I believe the past is prologue. The issue is, do you, did you have to know every nuance in an organization to say, that's what I'm going to fix? That really wasn't the key. The key was, what in my background would lead the public to believe that I could actually make a difference and actually do two things, improve services and do it at a reasonable cost. And so my history really dictated, you know, when you walk into companies, different companies, I probably have worked over 100 companies, probably hundreds of projects. So it's getting that new challenge. So I really was, was not overly concerned about the particular details, even though I, I basically knew the numbers, knew basically what they did, but didn't know the nitty gritty of the activity. But I really had no concern because I certainly was well versed in, in, in businesses and in government that I felt very comfortable that that would not be a very difficult uh, uh, transition to make. Well, now, uh, for those people who aren't familiar with the Office of Receiver of Taxes, it's an elected position. Yes. Uh, but it's really an office that collects revenues for, uh, for all of the taxing jurisdictions in, in the town. Um, describe the duties, the functions of the Receiver of Taxes. Certainly, and, and it is really a management uh, 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 position. Uh, the basic requirement and, and uh, what the office does, they collect monies, taxes, they process those taxes, and they distribute those taxes throughout the, uh, 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 the other uh, organizations uh, in, in government. You know, schools, and schools towns, uh, exactly, villages, all exactly. that. Exactly. We collect about $1.3 billion in taxes. Uh, which is which is really a lot of money, and you really and we really do that in a relatively short period of time. Uh, th there's two uh, 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 peak times uh, during uh, uh, we collect the taxes, which is December, January, and April, and 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 May. So we collect about 1.3 billion dollars, which is a quite a large uh, uh, su sums of money. I certainly certainly would have to say at this point that the staff that I inherited, uh, such a professional staff. One of the things that I thought I had to do was to train the staff in customer service, because sus customer service is key. And many times you hear- I mean, you're dealing with hundreds of people oh, every day. Many of, them are of senior, people. many of them are senior citizens- a Exactly. Who don't have a mortgage, they're not paying their taxes exactly. through their monthly mortgage payment. Exactly. And uh, frequently they have a lot of questions, or, or they you know, just may want to talk to somebody about why did this go up? Exactly, so I really watched and the professionalism that mm -hmm. was in the office, I was really surprised and I was amazed and it was something that I didn't have to instill uh, in the staff. They had that. So what is your vision for your office? I mean, one of the other things that they do in the private sector, it doesn't go on in government as much as it should, although that's changing because management practices from the private sector are now being applied to government, is that you develop a mission and a vision you know, for your office, uh, and that kind of guides people through their day-to-day -day activities. And we have, we have this vision. Matter of fact, we have a, a long-term vision, 
and we have a short-term vision. Let me just talk about the short-term vision. In, in business, we call it uh, grabbing the fruit, uh, low-hanging fruit. Right. And what that means is taking opportunities where you can improve services or cut dollars that's relatively easy to do, that you can do it in the short run. Uh, one of the things that we did in the short run, we produce tax rolls every year. Pat, the tax rolls are 11 by 17 binders. I've seen them. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of pages. Now to put that in context, the town of Brookhaven is larger than Nassau County. So every parcel and piece of property that has a tax map number, that's in that, that's in that Just book. to give you some numbers, right. there's about 180,000 parcels. Well, there you go. And about 90,000 of those parcels, we actually send out tax bills. And, and, the, and the other half are paid via the banks. So if you take a look at the tax rolls, 11 by 17 books, thousands of pages, thousands, hundreds of hours, in, dozens of hours in, in printing those tax bills, didn't really make any sense to print the tax bills. So what do we do this year? We have taken those dozens of books, placed them on our internet, on our server, and we no longer print those copies in house. So and somebody what's really could interesting, go. We actually print two copies: one that we send out to the county, which you have to do by which law. Which we have to do. But I've uh, I've been in contact with the county treasurer, and next year we've agreed that we're going to eliminate that from the county. You know so no one looks at that book. No one looks at the book. It gets filed. A exactly, it gets filed. And I'm looking at why should we be wasting, hurting the environment, right. wasting time, wasting dollars on, on the paper. That paper is not, uh, uh, not cheap, not cheap. So that a low-hanging fruit, that's what we did. Another thing, we would send out, uh, we probably send out anywhere between two, 300,000 uh, pieces of paper a, a, a year. We didn't barcode those mailers. Now, barcoding those mailers, and that's what we're in the process of doing now, and, and this year, this year when we mm -hmm. send out the tax bills, there will be barcoding. Barcoding will save on the expense of the mailers. The most important thing in any mail piece is not the printing, it's really the postage. So we'll be saving on postage. How much? Well, it's, it's a, it's, it will be about a 20% savings. 20% savings. 20% savings. That's, that's savings. real money. As a matter of fact, last year, knowing we were going to do this, right. on last year's, last year's budget that I did not put together, Last year's budget, the budget I inherited, right. I was able to cut $10,000, well, to be honest, $9,800 <laughs> from the budget because I knew that I was going to do this, and, and then we'll be taking uh, a further look at the budget as well. Okay, Lou, we have to take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk to you more about the innovations that you're bringing to your office and also how that might apply to other offices and other levels of government. So stay with us. We're going to continue our conversation with the receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou Marcucci. Don't go away. two aspects. One, it's a great staff, they're very professional, they know what they're doing, and, and really the most important aspect, and, and it, it goes with, uh, the staff has the same feeling, is really serving the public, solving the public's problem, helping seniors, helping young people, and, and, and just serving the public. I, I think that's the most exciting aspect, and doing with the staff that has the same goals as serving the public. September is National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Every day, 11 children die from cancer. The Sarah Grace Foundation for Children with Cancer is an all-volunteer charity that provides various programs to support these families. Please visit our website and do what you can to help support our mission. Wear a gold ribbon to honor and remember children with cancer. A killer cyclone has struck Myanmar and 8 million children need medicine, food, clean water, and shelter. These kids need our help now. UNICEF is there delivering emergency supplies and racing to save children's lives and protect them from the chaos and destruction left by the storm. Please, let's all stop what we're doing and help. We can save the children of Myanmar. Go to unicefusa.org and make a donation today. Thank you. Sure, my neighbors, Gene and Louise, they may be superheroes with superpowers, but that doesn't make them so super at saving energy and money. 
I may not be able to harness the power of the elements, but I save significant cash and help the environment with appliances, electronics, and windows featuring the Energy Star label. Discover your own energy saving superpowers with Energy Star. Go to getenergysmart.org. Mom, Dad's making fondue again. This is Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. Our guest is the receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Suffolk County's largest town, Lou Marcoccio. Lou, we were talking about your background as a technology executive doing technology consulting for all levels of government and, and, and companies all across the country. And now you're running the Brookhaven Receiver of Taxes Office as the elected receiver. Um, when we talk about how to improve government, how to improve service, you know, your, your office I would describe as kind of a uh, small office. It's not a big office, but on the other hand, it touches a lot of people. What other things are you doing uh, to use technology to improve services to your residents? Yes, yeah, so, and just to give you a little perspective on, on the budget, right. and, and we'll get to that. Um, we collect $1.3 billion, as I said previously. Our budget uh, for the office is is about 1.3 million dollars. The the budget for the town is approximately 170 million dollars. We collect in fees and interest. In fees and interest, we collect 1.40 thousand dollars. It costs less than 300 thousand dollars to run that office in a budget of a town of 170 million dollars. Sure. Just to give you a perspective. Yep. Um, and, and so it is relatively a, a small budget when you compare it uh, to the town. But that doesn't mean we don't take the bu every budget dollar uh, uh, seriously because mm -hmm. one, one must do that. So, so you know, given that, given that uh, uh, backdrop, one of the things that when you talked about vision, one of the things that we want to do is we want to create an interactive website. And we want to do several things to that. Give me an example. Of and that. I'm going to be very specific. One, we want to provide information. What does that mean? What does that mean? <coughs> Very few people I've, I've found, uh, residents in Brookhaven Town, actually understands the tax bill. Well, you know, I have a copy of a mailer that you've put together. Can we get this? Uh, here we are, right here. And this is a sample tax bill. Right. And you've got different boxes circled in red with a key on the bottom. How are you going to use technology to take this piece of paper and make that accessible to people when they're, uh, when they're at home on a Saturday afternoon and they say, gee, I just got my tax bill. Let me figure out what this is all about. Exactly. And that's precisely about information, Pat, and, and thank you for that. We want to take that information, place it on the Internet, and make it, make it very interactive where if someone wants to see either their exact bill or exactly what are they paying and what percentage are they paying and to provide that information to the taxpayer. And it's not just Saturday afternoon, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And they should also be able to pay their taxes at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so the first, the first thing we want to do is to provide information to the public, their tax bills, information as to where their taxes are going, and we also want to be able to process their tax payments. So the first aspect will be informational. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to provide information to seniors as to what exemptions are available to them, uh, what exemptions are available to veterans. I mean, they ought to be able to, and I'm sure you've done this in your consulting, to be able to answer a couple simple questions that will say, are you a veteran? Right. And you click and you say yes. Uh, and then it goes right to your tax bill and say, you're eligible for a veteran's exemption, but you haven't applied for exactly. it. Exactly. And it's all these other things exactly correct. So the informational aspect. The second aspect is paying your th taxes via the Internet in two ways. One, e-check and with credit cards. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm on a committee. Uh, I'm on a committee at the town of Brookhaven to select credit cards for the town of Brookhaven. Brookhaven Town as of today, does not accept credit cards for, so for any payments for any department. So if somebody, for any department. For any department. So if you have to go for a building permit, you've got to give them a check. Yes. Or cash. Oh, yeah, yes. But you can't, a you dog can't. permit, uh, marriage license, anything, any town government. 
So working together. Lou, it's 2008. By the way, Brookhaven isn't the only government exactly. that falls in that category. Exactly. My local village, I said to them, I got a parking ticket. I went down to pay. I said, why can't I just put this on a credit card? They said, well, we're talking about that. It's 2008. Exactly. Uh, now, there's certain limitations as to what we can charge, and we're working through that. Right. But I'm going through an RFP uh, process with the finance department and the town clerk's office, and, and, and we're actually going to select a, a bank and a credit card so people can outside of the receiver's office actually use a credit card uh, to pay. Now we did in install a credit card in an animal shelter if you want to donate. So if you want to donate money to the animal shelter, you can do that, you can do that card. with the credit card. So I really believe that's a good step sure and we need to provide that opportunity. For people that don't want to use uh, uh, credit cards, well, e-checks. You and can, that makes a lot of sense to do and that. And that's really simple. Your bank says if you want to send a payment to somebody, that's an e-check. Exactly. E exactly. Right on the web. Exactly. Now, we send out, as I said previously, about 90,000 statements. I mean, 90,000, probably individuals. It could be a little less individuals. Sure. Those are the checks we have to process. If we're able to diminish that 10%, 20%, what, what have we done? Well, the time that we spend in answering and helping people, we'll be able to do a better job. We'll be able to take those additional time and not increase staff. Right. Not and, and, and provide more time to answer questions uh, exactly. that people have. And then we, so I want to help transform the receiver's office. We will always have to process checks or, or mm -hmm. a payment. How do you make sure, I mean, you, as you mentioned, you, you collect over a billion dollars a year in tax revenues that are distributed to the schools and other jurisdictions. How do you make sure that that money is processed quickly and deposited? When we're talking about interest earned on the float and monies, I mean, if, 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 if checks are sitting on somebody's desk waiting to be opened for a day or two, that could add up to a lot of money. You know what's interesting, Pat, that most people didn't realize and I didn't realize while I was running for office? is that by law, the monies can only stay in the account for 10 days. Right. So it almost doesn't matter how quickly you get the check in from an interest bearing uh, 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 aspect okay. per se. But it is, it is important that we get that, that money in. What's, what's uh, uh, really interesting there is that we want to decrease the number of checks that we process. And you do have to do it in a short period of time. And that's mm -hmm. why there's two things are happening. With the current equipment that was installed in 2003, by the way, the decision that was made to do that in the receiver's office was a good decision. I'm going to keep that technology. I'm actually going to keep the current hardware that's there. Right now, we take a copy of every single check that comes into the office, and we are able to retrieve that check. When we replace this equipment, which I do not want to do now for one main reason, the equipment still works, and I'm not going to throw out the equipment to spend another $300,000 right. on new equipment until I have to. So I'm going to squeeze out every single day of operation, and that will probably be 2010, 2011. At that point in time, we will install what's called the Check 21 process, where as soon as the check is scanned, it would actually be deposited in the bank. There will be no more physical deposit of checks. It would immediately go into the that bank. Make, that's, that's, that is a huge innovation. Exactly. And by the way, I'm sure you know, once you implement that in Brookhaven, other towns will be doing it as a well. Exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the first things I did in taking off is that I froze my positions. I have anywhere from two to four positions. Right. I did not uh, uh, hire additional staff. I actually froze uh, those two positions. I have two more positions coming up. I will freeze them as well as well as cutting the budget from 2008 and making uh, uh, cuts as it relates to, to the freezing in saving on, on benefits. But what I'm hearing you say is that you're pretty confident that you can hold the line on your budget, reduce costs, but still improve service. Correct. Okay, we have to take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about some of the things that people may not be taking advantage of and that could help them reduce their taxes. So when we come back, we're going to finish our conversation with receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou Marcoccio. Stay tuned.
before I was diagnosed, I was doing typical stuff. Back to school for fun. Football practice. Mother of two young boys. Took a blood test. Kayla has leukemia. Acute leukemia. Myeloma. Hodgkin's disease. There's nothing worse in the world than this scared. Who's going to take care of my kids? I called the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Cancer needs a community. I know I'm not alone. It's you who are the support. It's giving people that hope. With your help, I can be cured. With your help, we can beat blood cancers. Be there to give them hope. To get or give help, go to LLS.org. Oh, my goodness! We have seen some big shots. <laughs> get out of here. See you later. That's a fifth. Wide open and scored. Man, that was pretty. And they'll score. Maybe that's the best match for the night. Unbelievable. It's good. It's good. Oh, what a pass of the 20. This guy has got it all. What a shot. Now we're going to double overtime. Stay with us right here on Cablevision Sports. The EAC Long Island Parenting Institute enhances outcomes for children by helping parents learn and practice effective parenting skills. Using research-proven curricula and approaches, the Institute teaches, supports, and empowers families from all backgrounds and cultures. For more information, call or visit us at eacinc.org. This is Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. Our guest is the receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou, Lou Marcucci. Lou, um, we, we've talked about the improvements that you're making and your philosophy of, of government and how it should work, but there are some things that, that uh, believe it or not, uh, could help people reduce their taxes uh, that many people aren't taking advantage of. One is the veterans exemption that's been expanded, and they're probably going to expand it again to cover you know, Gulf War veterans. Uh, tell us about that. How can people apply? And, and, and that really goes back to providing information to our residents. I think not getting the information out there. And there's two ways of doing that. Do we spend thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to send out mailers to 250,000 households? Or do we provide that information via the Internet, which is relatively cheap? Now, certain people certainly given maybe their disabilities or their age, they won't be computerized. And that's fine. And you can work around th those type of issues. You can have a phone bank sure. that can handle the exceptions. That's why information, Pat, is absolutely key. And, and, and let me give you an example on, on the, on the uh, veterans. I had a, a resolution passed, which was uh, 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 sponsored by Kathy Walsh, the councilwoman who was my liaison to extend a 90-day extension to combat veterans. We did that in the receiver's office. That's good. What do we do for seniors? Well, September 9th, there will be a resolution, again, pushed by the uh, receiver's office, mm -hmm. introduced by Kathy Walsh a as well, that will give seniors five additional days to pay their taxes. So I'm using current state law to give seniors, because what we did was we received a, a lot of phone calls from seniors that said, can I have a few days? I'm waiting for a check to come in. Right. The Social Security, the Social check, Security is due check at the end of the month. So, so gathering that information yeah. over the Good. last eight or ten months, Pat, it was clear to me that a law was there to actually help these seniors. Mm -hmm. So September 9th, there will be a resolution Good. at the town board, Brookhaven Town Board, that will allow a five-day extension. It will not increase cost. We will not lose revenue. It will create a little bit of, of a headache for us. Not really. Uh, uh, it will not increase our sure. cost, and it will be a great assistance, I believe, to the Lou, seniors. Lou, we have run out of time. If people have any questions, they can obviously call your office, or they can go to the web and just uh, Google Town of Brookhaven Receiver The web's of taxes. not there yet. The web's not there yet. It will be out next year. Okay. That's what I'm working on. All right. A exactly. But they can get the contact information off the town website Correct. to call Correct. your office. Correct. I really appreciate you coming. We'll have to have you back to talk I enjoyed more it, Pat. Thank about you. Uh, the kinds of innovations that you're doing there. And we have to get into... You know, what, what can other offices of government do to improve their operations through technology? Again, I want to thank uh, the receiver of taxes for the town of Brookhaven, Lou Marcocci, for being here today. And I want to thank you for watching Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. I'm Pat Halpin. We'll see you next time. See you later. That's a fifth. Wide open and scored. 
Man, that was pretty. And they score! Maybe that's the best match for the night. Unbelievable! It's gone! It's gone! Oh, what a catch of the 20! This guy has got it all. What a shot! Now we're going to double overtime! Stay with us right here on Cablevision Sports. The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. We'll be talking to the presiding officer of the Suffolk County Legislature, Bill Lindsay, about the economy and its effect on the county budget, energy, and other issues next on Cablevision's Meet the Leaders. I'm Pat Halpin and welcome to Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, a program designed to inform and update you about your community and issues on Long Island. Today our guest is Suffolk County Legislator Bill Lindsay, who's also the presiding officer of the Suffolk County Legislature. Uh, Legislator, it's good to have you back on Meet the Leaders. Thank you.